Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the Vision Transformer architecture. Transformer architecture has become de facto standard for NLP tasks, the natural language processing tasks. And uh, the application of transformer to computer vision is quite limited as of now. So in vision, attention is either applied in conjunction with CNNs, that is the convolution networks, or used to replace certain components of convolution networks while keeping their overall structure in place. But there was a paper not long time ago, an image is worth 16 by 16 words paper. It shows that the reliance on CNNs is not necessary. So this paper was published in very recently in just in 2021. It says that it shows that the reliance on CNNs is not necessary. A pure transformer architecture is applied directly to the sequences of images which are break broken down into patches and this uh, on this when you perform the transformer encoder architecture when you pass these sequence of images as tokens to the transformer encoder architecture this still works well on uh, you know as good as cnns okay so when pre-tained on large amounts of data and transferred to multiple mid-sized or small image recognition benchmarks, the vision transformer, it attains excellent results compared to the state-of-art convolution network and it requires substantially fewer computational resources to train. So our goal today is to understand the architecture of this vision transformer, though we are not going to go into the transformer architecture per se but we'll still try to understand what this vision transformer is about and i'll be showing you a, a small code uh, which i have taken from the hugging face model which is available for vit and we will see how an image classification task is performed using vit so in the image classification task we'll give an image and generally we'll ask what is this image about so our CNN uh, would give an object classification, we get a probability density function mentioning which class this image is uh, belongs to. So if it's a bird, car, cat, dog, etc. These are the classes and what is the confidence of this being a dog or a fox or a jet is what we expect in this probability uh, density uh, output, right? We apply a softmax here. So in image classification, CNNs uh, were the de facto standard up till now. So ResNet was the best, is still the best solution to image classification. And Vision Transformer, it beats CNN by a small margin. The caveat is the data set for pre-training should be sufficiently large, at least 100 million images. And VIT is based on the transformer architecture uh, the famously attention is all you need paper uh, describes the transformer architecture in detail. So what does VIT does is it takes the images and splits into patches and the patches they do not overlap at least in the experiment which uh, these people did they have not overlapped the patches but in case you want the patches to overlap you can still overlap the patches and give the stride like the patch size could be 16 by 16 and the stride is 16 by 16 in this case. So the patches would not overlap. But you can give a, another stride. It's for example, like we give the stride of one or two that would uh, create too many patches. Okay. So once the image is split into patches, these patches are provided as a sequence of linear embeddings as an input to the transformer. And image patches are treated the same way as tokens uh, in your NLP application. And we train the model on image classified 
on image classification in a supervised fashion. So the vectorization of these images uh, is done. This is particularly interesting is how they have done the vectorization of the images. So it is represented. Uh, so the 3D image re representation is height into width and to color. You reshape the 3D image into flattened 2D patches first okay, uh, with a sequence length of n. And then this is further flattened into a single dimension, one dimension sequence of token embeddings. And this one dimension vector, so the, the sequence of length is height into width divided by the p square where p comma p is the resolution of each image patch. And each patch is d dimension vector a trainable uh, with a trainable linear projection. So this dimension could be, for example, by default, it is 64 dimension vector. So if you look at one of the implementation, you would find that this is a configurable parameter. I'll just show you very quickly uh, after this PowerPoint how to uh, see the coding for, for this entire stuff. So as I said, each patch is a D dimension vector with a trainable linear projection. This is what I'm going to explain. What is this trainable linear projection? So each linear projection okay, is the one where the feature that is learned, okay, the feature that is learned, it is added into the this uh, weight matrix W. So each new feature, it is simply a weighted sum of the original features. So for each patch, it is uh, passed into a dense layer and you would apply the linear. Uh, so you would apply just this linear function. There wouldn't be any activation function applied to this. Okay. So the matrix W and B, these are the parameters that are learned from the training data. Basically the features of the images are learned and for each patch, you will have the uh, you will have this matrix which is trainable and the weights are shared across the all the patches okay now this is okay so far as you are flattening out the image but each uh, the each image when the patches you need to give a positional encoding to each patch the reason is that for a machine, whether it is uh, your patches, so basically for the network, if your patches comes like this or they come like this, they are all the same patches, but the image is not the same. So the sequence is important for uh, this purpose and hence we apply the positional encoding vectors to the z vector so that the z vector now is a combination of the positional encoding and your linear dimensions okay it has been noticed the paper mentions that uh, if you do not apply positional encoding then there is a three percentage drop in the accuracy of uh, the data and this positional encoding be could be as simple as uh, a one to three or it could be two dimension like first row, first column, first row, second column. But uh, the dimension of the positional encoding doesn't matter. So long as even the simple encoding uh, suffices and gives a good result. So now the Z vector along with the positional encoding, that would be the final Z vector, which will be passed to your trans, uh, transformer encoder layer. Now to this Z vector, a learnable embedded, we just prepend a learnable embedding to the sequence of the embedded patches. Okay, the output of this embedding, the output of this embedding would be the class information. So the output of each of these context vectors would be ignored in case of your classification problem and only output of this particular vector 
uh, would have the class information. Now, this particular feature is as good as the BERT classification. So, in the NLP, BERT, BERT is the state of art uh, architecture used uh, for in NLP and it uses the similar architecture. So, this is particularly uh, taken from the BERT architecture. Then this is passed to your multi-head self-attention, a dense layer, another uh, dense layer, another multi-head self-attention and a dense layer and so on. This is your transformer encoder network. You can configure how many layers of multi-head self-attention and dense layers you want in the transformer encoder network. So as I said, each of this gives a context vector. And of course, there is a lot of it going within the transformer encoder network, which we have not covered. But the transformer encoder network is as good as your attention is all paper mentions. Exactly like that. Notice there is no convolution happening at all in this images. Okay, No convolution function is being applied. So particularly for this example where you are doing a classification you are just interested in this this token and you will ignore all these other context tokens and then this is passed to a softmax uh, classifier a softmax layer and it will give you the probably the density of which class this belongs to so in a nutshell this is a diagram taken from the pa from the paper you would have your uh, image which would be divided into 16 by 16, a patches of 16 by 16. And these patches, they are linearly projected to flattened patches. And there would be a positional uh, embedding. So patch and the position embedding will be your C vector here. And this is passed to the transformer encoder. The details of the transformer encoder are mentioned here. I did not mention the normalization layers so, uh, but these are some uh, layers which are used to uh, quickly uh, learn the parameters. Okay? So, the main thing here is the multi-head attention and the dense layer, the multiple multiple layer perceptrons. Okay? And in this transformer encoder, we are just interested in the, uh, the first classifier token which would give us the class. I would quickly take you to the image classification with vision transformer. This is uh, you you can you, you can get this uh, from this is the Keras uh, implementation of the VIT. Here you would notice these are the configurable parameters out of which the projection dimension. Keras uses is 64. Okay, there is some batch size, the epochs. The patch size Keras is using by default is 6 here, but you can decide what your patch size should be. And these are your transformer units, how many transformer units you want to use. This is the size of your transformer layers. Okay. And this is the image size. We would need, we would have to resize all the input images to the same size. Okay. And how many transformer layers you want. So, these are the units within the uh, transformer layers and these are the number of transformers along with the MLP head units. This is how um, you can configure and the dense layer part which I was seeing is mentioned here in the multiple implementing the sorry, not implementing the MLP, it will be in implementing the patch encoding layer. So if you go through this code, you would find that the dense layer is applied and uh, the weights of this is, so whatever is being learned as a feature, uh, the weights of each of the patches, so the weight and the bias for all the patches would be uh, basically shared parameter. So the implementation of this, the hugging face vision transformer, there is a model by hugging face, uh, which is already there, the VIT, you can search for the VIT model, 
okay uh, so this in the model documentation in the transformer you will see a vit.html so let's quickly uh, do a pip install of the transformers and the transformer that we are interested in is the vit feature extractor and the vit for image classification and this is just to import the image and uh, since it would be a url the image url we are going to import the request so these are the libraries that we will require so this particular uh, link is of a egyptian cat so we will give the url so just open the url here pass this image to the feature extractor it would extract the features and this feature extractor okay to this feature extractor you will pass the image and you will say return the tensors so my tensors are return in pytorch to that to the model this model the vit for image classification model we are going to pass this as the input the extracted feature as the input and we will get the output output are in the form of a logits so it would be one out of these thousand and this logits will just take the argmax so this is your probability distribution you would take the argmax and it would give you the predicted class now this is all without using any kind of convolution okay and uh, i find it quite interesting and beyond it now there is something called as a mixture uh, i will just walk you through these data sets but beyond this there is something called as a mixture architecture which may uh, also leave this vit behind okay so i'm just getting ahead of myself let me quickly give you these numbers so on the image net on the on the on this data set so this has been tested on image net 1.3 million uh, data set on the medium uh, data set 14 million images and jft it's a 300 million images so for basically for jft vit is slightly better than resnet resnet is the industry standard as of now vit is slightly better for medium kind it's comparable and for small vit is slightly worse than resnet so the only point here is vit needs a lot of data to train better than the current industry standard so if you have less than 100 million images then resnet is better if you have above 300 million images then vit is better my slides are referred from uh, this particular uh, github wang shu sen Uh, along with it, I've modified some of the slides, but I was coming to this mixture architecture. Beyond VIT, now there is something called as a mixture architecture, which may very soon leave VIT also as a legacy architecture. So CNNs and VIT may become legacy. Looking at the way industry is working towards newer architecture day by day, but more on that later. I hope you understood the VIT architecture. Thank you.